In this Battletech vlog, we're going to look at making basic physical attacks, punching and kicking. Uh, in a follow-up, in a part two, we're going to look at charging and shove attacks. But those of you who are new to the game, while we're focusing on these powerful, these epic weapon systems, PPCs, missiles, machine guns, lasers, ballistic weapons, base to base, mech to mech, mech warrior to mech warrior, physical attacks, punching and kicking. It's important to understand how they operate, when to execute them, the dangers, the advantages, and how it works in the phase of the game. Depending on the rules that we're playing with, um, there are multiple phases to battle tech. But mech versus mech, the primary phases are first initiative, then we move back and forth, trading off or, or moving groups depending on what we have. Then you declare targets and you're in the shooting phase of the game. And then if you survive that, we go to the physical attack phase of the game. So the first thing in making physical attacks is you have to get up there. You have to get base to base with that mech, hex to hex, and make that connection. And of course, have the facing with your fists or with your feet. The challenge is you can be blown up before you even make that physical attack, and it stops it. Now, in the beginning of the game, that's not as important. You're probably going to make it up there, um, especially if you're in city fight, city tech, where it's really, really close, tight quarters. That's where physical attacks excel. Naturally, on an open type of um, desert or grass mat, hex map type setup, yeah, you could probably run away. You could run around. Um, city fight, it's going to go to hand-to-hand, -to -hand. literally, not just with your infantry, with your mechs, hand-to-hand. -hand. This is why it's important to be aware and to know and to try to utilize it. So when you make it up there, if you have internal damage, if you're open up left torso, right torso, you've got a stack of um, missiles in there, you could get hit and detonated before the physical attack phase. That needs to happen. We need to kind of keep that in mind. It, it can happen on there. Once you make it to the physical phase, you declare the attacks you want to make. Now, for punching and kicking, what this means is in order to execute a punch, you have to have not fired any weapons in that hand. Um, likewise, to keep in mind, it's easy to forget, same thing with kicking. Something like the Crusader does have missiles in there. If I fired off my missiles, I'm not able to kick. Side note, there are some special rules um, in the TAC Ops and in some of the pilot cards that allow you to kind of fire the weapon and follow through and, and punch. I think it's called punch through or strike through on there. You guys will correct me with that. Um, but for the most part, it's if you fire the weapon, you can't use the limb. Look at a Battlemaster. Battlemaster is a great example. If I fire that PPC or if I've got a T-bolt, I fire that large laser, I can't make the attack on that arm. There's no take backs. We, we have to... Make sure, if you're thinking about physical attacks, don't fire that weapon. It's, it's, it's happened to me many, many times on there, for some reason with the grasshopper. I think because I'm so um, focused on firing all those energy weapons and not worrying about heat. So are you up there? Have you made it? Are you hex to hex, base to base? Are you facing? Have you survived the shooting round? And have you not made any weapon attacks with those hands? Yes, then you can go to it. So punching, of course, um, you have to roll to hit. There's the usual modifiers. The big amazing thing about punching is the fact that the tonnage of the mech is multiplied. So if you're in a 100-ton mech, you're going to do massive damage to one area. But even if you're in a light mech, even if you're in a light mech, you've got a stinger and you're punching, you're going to do a lot less damage. But instead of rolling on the chart for 1 to 12, you're going to roll on the punching chart, which is a 1 to 6 and the head, that's a 1 in 6 chance of hitting the head. That is the tactica for punching. To be able to get up there and literally plant your fist in a mech's face. If you're an assault mech, if you're a heavy tonnage, it's going to go to internals. It might even knock that head clean off on there. Um, if you're in a, an assault mech and a stinger comes up and punches you in the head, I don't know how's it reaching, but okay, it does on there. Um, it's not going to knock your head off. It might not go to internals, but it's going to force a pilot check to consciousness. It's going to force you to deal with that. Um, and it, although at the lower levels, I don't want to say auto pass, um, it could happen. You could go night-night for a turn on there. 
There's also a chance you're not going to hit the legs. It's going to focus on the arms and the upper torso, center torso, left torso, right torso. If you punch through to some internals, if you've damaged some things there, this is a chance to, to do some focused, concentrated fire. That's the idea of punching. By getting up there, you're focusing on the chart in that area. Kicking does the exact opposite. So there's no drop kick um, to the head, although there are a couple of examples. We'll, we'll, we'll pause that qualifier for a moment. Um, kicking does the exact opposite. The kicking deals damage either to the left or the right leg on there. So again, it's, it's multiplied by tonnage. If you're a stalker, if you're a stalker and you are kicking a mech, that's going to be all that tonnage damage right to a left or right leg and it's going to transfer. And if you're kicking a light mech or a medium mech, you're literally going to like axe kick and just split the mech in half. If you're kicking a heavy or assault mech, it could probably take that kick. Can't take two kicks on there. And um, going to the, the real damage with um, taking leg shots and taking leg damage on there. And I'm going to make a note here for a future podcast discussing the, um, the various damage locations, why you want to take damage there, why you don't want to take damage there. Um, most of us like to focus on not taking damage there because if we get a leg blown off, you're not out of the game, but your mobility has gone and, and you're propping yourself up and you're going to get curb stomped or, or just ignored on there. I, I, I had a thorn that had its arms blown off and its leg blown off. And um, before its other arm got blown off, I was able to stand up. Then it's got its arm blown off. And it literally just sat there on one leg the entire game. And it was just ignored. But I was able to use it as an initiative sink, at least there. But my opponent was taunting me by, by not shooting it. But actually, he did a great job because um, it was part of a campaign. And while it was a complete loss on the mech and I totaled it, at least there was some salvage that I was able to get to it as opposed to if it just got totally um, exploded and, and blown out. Uh, but the big thing with kicking is... You are taking those modifiers and putting it in there and going to internals. You can force really fast, faster than firing weapons. You can force um, some critical damage, potential for crits on there. And crit damage to legs is is huge. Um, second to that is probably gyro damage because crits to legs, it's going to mess around with your movement. It's going to mess around with your pilot checks. It, it just starts stacking nasty modifiers on there. That, that just chews up the mobility of your mech. And, and the key to mechs is mobility. Even if you're an assault mech, mobility to be able to turn, to be able to face, to be able to move. So kicking does tremendous damage, possibly locking the leg off or forcing it to internals. Kicking is more dangerous because as the attacker, if you miss, you have to take a pilot check. you got to make sure you don't fall down. Um, I love to punch. Uh, in wargaming systems, if you've been on a side note, um, Warhammer 40K, I play Chaos Space Marines, Coronate Berserkers. If you know what that means, that means I charge across the field. Doesn't matter what you have. Doesn't matter your guns. Doesn't matter anything. I charge across the field. I get into close combat, and I put you to the chainsword and the bolt pistol for personal glory. Um, World War II, Chain of Command. Um, you know, when I'm playing my late war Germans, I, I've got my big tech, I've got my big toys, I, I love tigers, right? I love king tigers, I, I love all that stuff. But I will infantry charge, I will issue that senior officer command, throw out the hand grenades, and, and charge on there. I, I, I have to, for the glory, on there, I have to. So, I love the assault phase, I love close combat, but battle tech, Early on, there's been a couple of times, and it's traumatized me. It, it, it really has. It really has. Um, where I had an Atlas the most recent time. I had an Atlas. I make it up there. I'm blasting with the autocannon. I'm, I'm just punching with fists. And I'm like, I'm going to drop kick this mech. I kick. I miss. I fall. I'm surrounded by four other mechs. You know, you're an assault mech. You're in there. Um, all I remember was, like, four other mechs, like, looking down on me. I'm like, all right, you know, now they're just like shooting at me and everything. But I'm like, all right, I'm getting up. I'm going to take it. Pilot check, get up, fail. Okay, I get shot at. I get kicked. I get beat up again. Next turn, pilot check, fail. Uh, now I'm like, I might as well just stay on the ground. Like, that might as well be the tactical. Let's just like stay on the ground here or, or do something. But I'm like, no, one more time. Pilot check, fail. So is that going to happen? But you got to keep it in mind. It could. You could miss. And from there, you might fall. Even though it's a modified pilot 
um, skill role. It's, it's possible. So that is the primary advantage of um, punching and kicking in that you're going to work instead of on the 1 to 12 chart, you're working cut in half up, cut in half low, the chance to cause some mobility damage, the chance for a headshot on there. Keep in mind tactically where kicking and physical attacks become brutal are with assault mechs. Let's look at the stalker. Stalker doesn't have any arms, but if it gets close in its torsos, it's got the lasers, it's got the missiles, it's going to open up with all of that firepower, and then it's going to kick you. If you look at this example like we're talking the Battlemaster, I'm going to get up there, point blank, I'm going to be like, lasers, lasers, SRM-6, punch, punch, kick on there that's that's some brutality that's some real like medieval brutality stuff going on you have to watch it side side note there are times when elevation comes in key and things can be taken by surprise um light mechs tend to be fast very fast heavier and assault mechs a little slower they might want to hang out next to hills for indirect or or to try and get some cover you know try and um get facing issues if you can get a mech, and I say light mechs, of course, this isn't limited to light mechs, but they're easier because of the speed. If you can get higher elevations than an assault mech, so if I'm on top of uh, an elevated hill and I'm kicking you, I have the, the modifiers of the kick, which are greater than the punches, but because of the elevation adjustment, I'm going off the punch chart on there. I did that in one game uh, where I had a locust swarm. You know, I, I usually, in higher battle value games, just for the lulls, I'll, I'll run six locusts. I, I run the variant with the laser and the SRM-2s. Although these days, I'm, I'm looking at um, a long-range missile variant. But uh, the only thing greater for the lulls, I already bought all the mechs because it's kind of a, a classic mech on there. I bought the locusts. But for the real lulls, I probably should have bought fleas. But six locusts coming at you, um, I got a locust against a stalker on top of a hill. And I'm... I'm I'm kicking the heck out of this stalker. And and for bonus lulls, it was against the head because the elevation, I mean, against the punch chart, even though it was a kick, and it was rear armor. Of course, I missed the head. I really didn't do much. And then the, the it turned around and just blasted me, but it's like I, I, I had to go for it. So keep in mind, I bring that up, illustration up, keeping that in mind for targets and chances of opportunity where you can kick and possibly go off the punch chart. We also need to look at death from above because it's it's also a physical attack, but it's it's very unique. It's got a lot of what ifs, um, but it's a lot of fun in battle tech. Tactically, it's like the worst thing that you can do because there's just too many what ifs to make it happen. And even if you pull it off, you're going to take some damage on your mech. But it is a unique feature of battle tech, and it's like, look, you play battle tech, you you, you got to do death from above. You have to. You just you just kind of have to on there. So. Uh, we're definitely going to take a look at and cover that part three.